right to that guy okay. right there. Oh, so this is USB? Yeah, so it's all just serial, no microcontrollers at all. Okay. So I'm just parsing everything else in that. And then it interfaces, what did you write the software? It's all, it's just a mess pad, so you can see this. Oh, okay. You can see like, yeah, traditional variation maps. there. And then, yeah, and that. So for our more important people, this is Max. And then, <laughs> And then the Max just sends everything out to exactly. Isadora. So. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. It's a lot of fun. Isadora, very Isadora. nice. <laughs> Yay, Isadora rocks. <laughs> Thanks. So how did you begin? Well, I, uh, I started as an actor. Um, I went to undergrad for four years of acting school. Um, I was doing musical theater, stuff like that. And then I was doing video stuff. Um, I couldn't really merge the two. I didn't know how to merge the two. Um, and a big problem in experimental theater, which I started doing, was uh, the tech time. It's just the tech time to set up and do all the video stuff is so time consuming. And you have to bring all your stuff there, you have to keep it there in the space, and it's, you know, it's terrible. Um, so all this stuff started as uh, a way to sort of be able to improv um, using intuitive uh, control of media, like on stage. So, um, you know, I mean, just the fact that I can do that and it makes noise, oh, I can wait. map that to other stuff as well. So, do that again. <laughs> okay, I can see the appeal of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this, I mean, the stuff that I actually am doing is, um, I never considered myself a wearables person at all. Um, until, like, I made the shoes first, because it was just, like, by constraints. I, I, I would go to NYU, like, an interactive telecommunications program at NYU. Um, and Tom Igo actually taught me how to do all this stuff. Uh, just right over there, just talking to him. Um, and I made these shoes, and I was like, oh, it makes so much sense to like put technology on the body as like an intuitive controller. Because a lot of people are like in their laptops, you know, um, like controlling things with buttons. But if you can just map stuff to gesture, it just makes so much more sense. So I don't have to think about like what I'm doing. Like I just build out the system, and all of a sudden I have all these things I can play with, which is great for me as a performer. I like that. Have you done a Have you done a show with it yet? Um, you know, you build the tools and then you learn how to use them. <laughs> so that's the next step. Is um, I've done two performances with them uh, in the city, in New York, um, using using the shoes, uh, the gloves, and some other stuff, um, and it's gone over well. It has. What were the drawbacks, or the positives, or the drawbacks? Of it? What did you learn? The thing I, the thing I learned is like I was very interested in. Through uh, experimental performance and like constraining movement and using these things as a way to generate movement, um, like maybe to look for things that aren't that aren't uh, uh, maybe apparent, like trying to generate movement that we don't do every day, basically. Um, but the things that I did notice that were a drawback was people started comparing me like to a cyborg, which is not, which is really not what I'm going for. Although. It looks like, you know, my outfit is a little bit cyborg-ish. Um, I'm really not going for that. I'm trying to actually explore the implications of te the technology kind of through the devices. So, they're weird, because this is kind of like more of an invisible thing, whereas yeah. these things, these form factors, obviously call attention to themselves as devices. So, the drawbacks are kind of that some people get it, and some people don't. But that's okay. What does that mean? Some people get it. Some people get the like idea certain, behind it, or yeah, they're, yeah. they're not repelled by it, or do you think people are repelled by it? People are, yeah, I think that people are a little Why? bit repelled by it. Are they scared of being on camera? What do you think that is? I'm not sure. In performance especially, I think that people, people sometimes outside of performance see it as, um, just more technology, like I'm just kind of like adding to the junk pile of technology, and I don't want to do that. I want to like explore like why we're doing what we're doing with yeah. the technology that we have. Okay. So some people get that that's what I'm exploring, and some people just see it as like another gizmo. You know? Okay. And it's hard, so it's hard to show stuff like that here because <laughs> like everything's a gizmo. Everything. You know? So, so that's I mean that's why I got the fun sound effects. Yeah. Get into it, you know? Do you think that that takes away from your being an actor, like a true actor at all? No, like, I don't. Do you think there's a, a war between technology and you being a real actor? 
I don't think there is. I don't think there is. I think there is um, an interesting dichotomy between the presence of an actor and the presence of a mediated person on stage. Um, so people like the Worcester Group, they are very much focused on the presence of the, the actor on stage as well as the technology on stage, um, and they're separate. And like, what I, I guess what I'm trying to do is trying to do is is not put them at odds against each other, but use one as a layer on top of the other to see, and see what happens. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So are you, are you thinking scripted, unscripted, one man show, lots of people on stage? Right now it's been a it's been a one man show, um, and it was scripted, and you know there's like we're interested in unnatural movement, like I said before, so like lots of twitches, and, you know, just like weird little little movements. Um, but actually in Chicago, uh, the theater company called Big Picture Group, and we're actually going to um, use these, use the helmets in a performance of uh, The Good Person of Szechuan. Uh, so the main character is actually uh, going to be wearing one of these, so she can, you know, she switches back and forth between being one person and fooling everyone else on stage and being another person. So this is a way to explore, you know, in our contemporary society, like how we, how we might use technology as a, as a layer over ourselves, actually.